Now we want to graph y equals negative 2 plus 2 cosecant of theta. Our first step is to pretend that we're graphing the reciprocal. So we're going to graph y equals negative 2 plus 2 sine of theta. And I'm choosing the sine of theta. Um, it's actually not a choice. I'm writing the sine of theta because cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So you don't really have a choice. If I was going to be graphing the secant of theta, right there, I would be graphing the cosine curve first. But we're graphing cosecant right here, so we're going to graph the sine of theta first. Now, I'm not going to graph just the parent function of sine of theta. I'm going to graph this function right here. So the negative 2 up front is our midline. So that means that our midline drops from y equals 0 to y equals negative 2. Our amplitude is 2. And there's no other changes here. So sine starts at the midline. 2 pi later, because the period is not affected here, sine ends at the midline. And then halfway between, we're at the midline. Halfway between the first two points, when theta equals pi over 2, we're going to have an amplitude of 2, so we're 2 units away from the midline going to our maximum. And then at 3 pi over 2, we're going to be at a minimum, which is an amplitude of 2, a distance of 2 away from the midline again. And now I'm going to continue that pattern. And there's my sine curve. Now I'm doing a, a dashed line because it's not the sine curve that I really want to graph. I'm given the task of graphing cosecant. Well, we know that the cosecant is going to have vertical asymptotes everywhere the sine curve crosses through the midline. This is really beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, technology. And we know that our cosecant curve takes the maximum values from your sine curve and creates a u going up and from the minimum values of your sine curve a u opening down so we have a u opening up and a u opening down and that is our graph now if we wanted to be extra extra particular we could go in and we can erase that sine curve because it's really not necessary and there's our beautiful we could even erase the highlighters and there's our beautiful cosecant curve or you could just leave your dashed lines just make them very very light i'm 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 cool with that okay here's one more y equals the secant of theta minus one you might even think that you could try this one which i'm i'd be completely okay with so try to be a step ahead of me, maybe. Press pause, play it, try it for yourself. See if uh, you can do this on your own. And then press play and check if your answer's right. So secant comes from cosine. So we're going to plot y equals cosine of theta minus 1. Now this minus 1 right here is on the outside of the function. So it's translated down one unit, which is going to take our midline and shift it down. And that's the only transformation we're dealing with, which is really nice. So now we can just go right to graphing our cosine curve. Cosine starts at the max when theta is zero. 
and then 2 pi later, we're at the max. Halfway between, when theta is pi, we're at a minimum of negative 1. And then at our pi over 2s, we're at the midline. I'm going to continue that pattern. Golly, I love teaching this. You have to admit, this is... This is the epitome of happiness when you're working on math. I mean, seriously, graphing these things, it just doesn't get much better than this. Well, it does, but the best is yet to come in trigonometry. So up until this point, this is where we're at. So now we're going to plot our vertical asymptotes. And where do our vertical asymptotes go? I I ask you, well, you're probably saying in your head where the graph crosses the midline. And you would be right. Where the graph crosses the midline. At all those pi over twos. And now, at all of the maximums, we have u's opening up. And at all the minimums, we have U's opening which way? That's not even a U. Let's try that again. A U opening up. And at all the minimums, we have U's opening down and tangent to those minimums. Tangent to the maximum opening up. Tangent to the minimum opening down. Tangent. And you can see, I'm going to just shade this in, you can see that in between your maximums and minimums, there's no outputs. And that's exactly the way it's supposed to be. No outputs. Now you don't need the green part of your graph because it's not part of your graph. The blue dashed is not part of your graph. So what can you do? If you wanted to, you could erase all of that pencil mark. And you probably should, to be honest with you. So it wouldn't be a bad idea to do that. Maybe continue your vertical asymptotes. And that is how you graph a secant curve or a cosecant curve, a secant sinusoidal function. It's not sinusoidal, I'm sorry. A secant function or a cosecant function um, with transformations.